of capturing this for you. So thank you. Okay, so today's Marvelous Monday. I wanted to uh, cover some things, cover marketing in crisis. It's Mondays, and so in, according to the State of the Spark Freedom Framework, MSPBA, um, that's kind of how we shape all of our small businesses. I know that's oversimplified to some of the bigger businesses you might have, but you know our major audience is small business. And the framework uh, to, to be able to think about businesses in any given way, MSPBA, and that's marketing, sales, production, bookkeeping, and admin. And almost every system, A, each of those should have one major system, if not multiple, but all the KPIs are around that, all the roles are assigned in that. And I, I thought, hey, today we'll cover some marketing. We did cover marketing in crisis last week. Um, but if you're paying attention, again, it might be a little early for some of you, but I just saw B jump on. I just saw Rut jump on. Um, if you're paying attention and you're up, maybe you're up enough to handle a little bit of marketing. We're going to cover marketing in crisis in two separate groups. One is if you're seeing a slump. And my few quick points on if you're seeing a slump, what you should be doing with your time regarding marketing. And then the other is if you're busier than usual, as our website company is busier than usual, and the few things that you should be doing uh, with your marketing. For that we're gonna cover that but before that i want to cover other news could we please cover some other piece of news um and i know that some you know i know that we are just inundated i know all day you're going to be checking your phone are they letting us go back to work i know you're going to be checking your phone are we uh is the economy crashing is it going up so we're going to cover other news so first uh let's cover some things number one I hope you had a great weekend. I know that we ate like crap, and I'm sharing this with you to share the human side of this. A lot of you guys see me as a coach, and you've seen me on stage, and I try to be as human as possible while still maintaining my energy. I think, I think that sometimes when you're overly positive, uh, people either think you're faking or they think you're a superhero, and that's not the case. Uh, and so I try to bring this much humanity here, but I think there are some speakers that disqualify themselves. Because they, they know that this is going on. They know that people, especially with young folks, um, they have like a hero worship complex. And so to get around that, some speakers and trainers and coaches like demean themselves. I'm not going to share that. I am going to share that we ate way too much. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but in times of crisis, I get a lot of energy from my leadership from taking action. I like taking uh, control of my own life first off, but also helping others regain a sense of control. I know that a lot of pain, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know a lot of painful uh, suffering during crisis happens, uh, not just for fears of worries of economy, not just of loss of cash, though all of that happens and all that is true. What happens more than anything, I think, is that people feel a great loss of control, and as such, they start to get depressed or they start to manifest you know, negative uh, side effects. They they stress eat. They stop working out. They get snitty with their with their spouse. Can any of you relate to that? So Sunday was really tough for me. If I were to be honest, again, this is this is the segment of the show called In Other News, and just sharing a piece of human side and how we dealt with it. So I uh, was having a tough Sunday. Marissa was having a tough Sunday, and to be honest, we freaking stress ate. We try not to take it out on each other, but we stress ate. And you know what? That's okay because this morning I'm detoxing. I've got my apple cider vinegar, my baking soda, my lemon juice. I've got all that going in there to help clean out my kidneys. I had a little too much to drink. I don't drink too hard at all, but so anything to drink is too much to drink for me. But let me tell you something about chocolate-covered Oreos. Hey, man, chocolate-covered Oreos, they'll get you through. So this is, what I wanna, this is why I'm sharing all this with you. It's okay to let yourself unwind. I struggle unwinding. So I just want to encourage you, as next weekend hits, make sure you be kind to yourself. Be kind to your body. Be kind to your mind. And allow yourself to unwind. This week is different because it's a marvelous Monday. And you and me and all the other small business leaders in the world are going to be tackling things today that I'm super excited about tackling. But I want you to be kind to yourself. I want you to make sure that you recognize this is a marathon, not a sprint. And if you can remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint, I think that we'll actually be okay together, you know? I think that we'll make it. So um, I just wanted to encourage you, be kind to yourself, be kind to your body, be kind to your mind, but get into this thing for the long haul. With our businesses, we feel like we need to work overtime. I know I do. I have 11 and 12-hour days. I can show you my toggle. 11 and 12-hour days easily. I don't recommend that for everyone, but that is how I manage. That's how I do it. 
So be kind to yourself. Uh, don't feel like you have to be what I do. So that's why I love Monday. So real quick in other news. So a quick thing, like I am getting, not sick. I mean, yes, we're sick. We're sick of this message, but we can't not pay attention to what's going on, what the governor is talking about, what the White House is talking about. We can't ignore this. So here's a few quick points on what's going on. Number one, Skype is trying to make a comeback with, with its product called Skype Meet Now. Let me tell you something. Dear Skype, maybe you should have taken a Skype call with Google because it has a product called Google Meet. And you know this is going to be a lawsuit. So, hey, where you been, buddy? It's like you've been hiding under a rock during remote work season, and I applaud you for stepping up and trying to offer a new piece of technology. Maybe it's different, but at least get the branding you need. So I feel for you. Keep trying. Keep going. But Zoom and Google Meet and Google Hangouts are here to stay. Maybe even Facebook Messenger. I don't know. Number two, Microsoft Edge becomes the second most popular web browser. Fake news. So I was going through my news feed and I saw this article. And, and for those of you who don't know, you know, a lot, even though we have Spark and I do a lot of coaching and training and small business training and sales training, I also happen to build and manage uh, Spark sites. And we are a tech company. And I saw this news article come through my tech feed and I said, what are they talking about? If anyone out there watching has used Google Edge or Microsoft, forgive me, Microsoft Edge, I would love to hear from you and hear about your experience. For us, this is the slowest website. It doesn't render modern, updated website design standards well in the least. It's a horrible web browser. So I looked it up, and I've got the statistics right here. Um, it is not the second most popular web browser. Google, uh, Google Chrome has 59% of the market share of people browsing on the Internet, 59%. Safari has 12%. Internet Explorer and Internet Edge together only make up 9% more popular than Firefox and Opera. You don't have to know what Opera is. You might not even know what Firefox is. You probably don't even know the difference between Explorer and Edge, and I would not blame you for that. So the second headline, Microsoft Edge becomes the second most popular web browser, is fake news. Uh, you've probably heard, so point number three, you've probably heard of the supermoon. I've heard of the supermoon. Most people have heard of the supermoon. But what you might not have heard of is the super pink moon. Apparently, I feel like there's a new supermoon like every month now. I think, I think NASA or the scientists realized that we were nerding out about this supermoon deal and got outside to take photos at night or something uh, for amateur photographers. And they started making up these moons. So I guess this week, we have the super pink moon. It's not fake news. It's a thing, and apparently it's something with the atmosphere that gives it a pink hue. It's Halo. So check that out this week. Number, uh, number four, NASA shares its long-term plans for a lunar moon base. Now listen to me, folks. If this show ever becomes popular, or if our uh, companies, our website company, our bookkeeping company ever take off, and if my speaking uh, I say take off. They're doing really well. But if my speaking and training, if I ever become Gary Vee and I'm on a stage and then suddenly that I disappear from the, from the face of the earth. I literally have disappeared from the face of the earth and I've moved to a lunar moon base. And not because I'm trying to get away from people, but because I love the nerdy science. I love the nerdy science. So that's number four. NASA shares plans for the long-term moon base. And number five, for those of you who are not on TikTok, I understand. I happen to love the platform. It's super fun. But it's got a new trend based on Zoom. So all these people working remotely, teachers that are teaching remotely, business people that are in their Zoom meetings, there's a new uh, TikTok trend on a spouse walking in naked and filming, not themselves, you don't see the naked person, they film their spouse's response as they're on Zoom and look up and see their spouse naked and what they do. And if you watch this trend, it's hilarious. And the trend, that when you see people's face and watching the difference between how the guys respond and how the girls respond, is huge. So those are my five points of what's going on in other news. Thank you. Uh, hopefully you are also looking for things that are not corona-related, not crisis-related, not economy-related, because guess what? You're going to get slammed with that all day anyway, especially with the Facebook warriors. I guess uh, the Facebook warriors are those who fall into the camp of the stay-at-homers versus the don't tread on me, go outsiders. And believe it or not, the rest of us are somewhere in between. And um, I've had to use a hashtag app, so just some quick notes on this. 
for those of you who know me and, and you guys know I love to be positive, I've started using a hashtag and that hashtag is hope shaming. I'm using this tag in order to shame those people who are trying to shame people like me. <laughs> it's like an inception of shame um, on, on staying positive. And my note to everybody is this, listen, uh, and these are friends of mine. These are people I've worked with. These are people that I know um, and like, I like. I know, guys, and I think all of us are, for the most part, believe it or not. I think most people, believe it or not, are respecting the stay-at-home order or the social distancing order. And yes, we're allowed to spout our opinions and you're allowed to spout yours, but if someone posts in their own feed something positive, you are not a Facebook warrior. Go post your stay-at-home or stay the F home post on your own profile. We get it. We get it. Most of us are reasonable, and we're taking very good measures to stay clear. But hashtag, don't be a hope shamer. Share something positive out there today, guys. I want to see your news feeds. I want to see you sharing great news. Not fake optimism. Let's not do fake optimism, but let's start seeding people. And if you do happen to have an opinion, like I have a very strong opinion that in general this thing is very serious, but I don't believe it's nearly as serious as what's going to happen with the economy. I'm not trying to trivialize the coronavirus. I'm not trying to put profits over people, not at all. I happen to believe that from a public health perspective, what's going on with the economy is going to be devastating. Yes, economically, but also in terms of public health, also in terms of all the things we're afraid of for other people. I just think it will affect things in a significant way, and we need to be sensitive to it. That's my opinion. I can say that on my own platform. You can say yours on your own platform, but don't be a hope shamer. Share hope. Let's get out there. Let's put this thing together. Here's some hope for you. We're going to overcome this thing. Here's some hope for you. We're going to come out of this and rebuild the economy. There's hope for you if you're not really sure what to do. So real quick, as promised, Marvelous Monday. Um, I'm going to have a few quick posts, three quick points for brands that have slowed down, three quick points for brands that are – or four quick points for brands that are busier and how to deal with this. So I'm going to go down through these real quick. Four brands that have slowed down. Number one, take time to focus on internal. And, and again, reminder, this is about the MSPBA uh, Freedom Framework from Spark Sites about your business. And it's Monday, so we're going to cover some quick points on marketing. Um, so for brands that have slowed down with your marketing, focus on some internal projects. Consider updating your business fundamentals. If you have a content funnel or a content backlog, backlog where you kind of just put ideas that you think your clients might be interested in, Go ahead and add that information into your Trello board or a content backlog somewhere. Focus on some long-form SEO writing on your website. Go to your website, familiarize with your blog, and write some long-form. That's step number one, focusing on internal projects. Now, we could talk about what this – if you slow down, we could talk about what this looks like for sales. We could talk about what it looks like for production, bookkeeping, the admin. But for, for today, your internal marketing project should be focused on – uh, consider updating your business fundamentals, your marketing fundamentals, like your content funnel and your content backlog, or long-form SEO uh, writing for your website. And top, and, and here's a here's a top secret trick on this that is not so top secret. Trends.google.com. Trends.google.com. Put your uh, industry terms and the header up there, and search for your terms and see what over the last few weeks people have been searching as it relates to the coronavirus in your industry. It will give you ideas. It's a great topic to include long-form writing on, and it still help you build your brand. Um, stay connected, so number, that's number one, focusing on internal marketing projects. Step number two, stay connected, but don't over-communicate. Chances are, if your business has slowed down, it is a market reaction to perceiving that though your services in a normal market are useful, in a crisis market are not as focused, and it is unique to this pandemic market. If we were in a different downturn of some kind, uh, you might be in high demand. It really is subjected to this unique time in history. And so the point here is this. If you slow down, your services or your products might not be have immediate need in the market. I'm sorry about that. So any over-communication from your brand could seem tone deaf and spammy more spammy than usual. So stay connected. Be involved on other people's posts. Comment if people are asking questions about your industry. Respond quickly, but don't over-communicate. Please try to dial your barometer in because it can wound your brand 
if your brand or your products or service are not particularly effective. And number three, focus on client success. It can never hurt for you to have quick response times, to add value to your current clients, to add loyalty programs, to add referral programs, celebrate things like birthdays or anniversaries, and maybe that also reflects back to focusing on your fundamentals, focusing on incremental projects, and one of those projects being focus on client success. These are marketing activities, and they can help you protect your brand. For those who have slowed down, you need to focus on protecting your brand, and then you know using any of the um, uh, SBA loans or any sort of uh, incentive programs for you to stay in business longer, your name of the game is protecting your brand. Again, if you've seen a slowdown because your products or service are not relevant in the space, let's move on. Uh, and ask any questions in the comments below. Please, please ask questions. I'd be more than happy to uh, take any of those questions. Tom Phillips. Oh, Tom does want me to give a shout out. Yes, uh, public transit is running. It just looks a little different. RideCitrus.com has uh, some details. That is not a sponsored plug of any kind. I just noticed that Tom Phillips, who I have a huge amount of respect for his leadership during the season, I just wanted to make sure that he put that in there. Okay, so real quick, for brands that are busier than usual, for brands that are busier than usual, adjust your messaging to help customers understand quickly how you support the market needs. So what this is, this, this is, this. If you are busier than normal, that is because your products or service are most likely hyper-relevant in this market or helpful. For example, Spark Sites has gone through the roof. People are pivoting to e-commerce. People are shifting to putting out uh, gift certificates and coupons and membership programs. We are busy right now, day and night, and we're growing. We're expanding, and it's like, Ugh, I don't know what to do, and that's not a brag. That's literally uh, us empathizing with other industries that are going through a similar surge. You need to, what we've discovered is you need to adjust your messaging to help customers understand quickly how you're supporting their needs. For example, though I could talk about, hey, get WordPress support and a brand new website. That's been not sleazy, but that's been kind of our messaging for a long time. In this market, we've shifted. Same service set. Our phones are blowing up. I've just got two new leads, two new clients yesterday and another uh, request last night for some marketing leads. We're shifting to say, hey, listen, uh, Spark Sites helps support your messaging in times of crisis. It's actually the same service set. We're just paying attention to A, what their business is, B, why that business is going so well in this market, and C, let's be sensitive. Let's not do the brag. Let's not be like, hey, we're better than our competition. No, 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 no. We help people dial this in. So you need to adjust your messaging very quickly. For example, big shout out to my friend Ryan Chris. He's been a client of ours. He's a friend. Um, he just recently got married. Congratulations, Ryan. And he came to me and said, Grant, you know, I, uh, we're adjusting our service. Uh, we're busy because people are really wanting to keep things clean. And he has an elite uh, car detailing or vehicle detailing service. He's done high-end mega yachts. They do uh, these Prevost or Provost uh, um, uh, recreational vehicles. I'm sorry, the really high-end ones and the medium-end ones. He helps a lot of uh, senior citizens with their uh, with their RVs, but he's done a lot of car detailing. And he said, "Listen, we have this service called Ozone, and I don't know anything about this. Maybe you do. I don't know anything about Ozone." So he comes along and says, "If you put Ozone in there, the way it reacts, it kills off smells, but it, that's because it's killing off bacteria." And for Uber Eats drivers and DoorDash drivers, my point is, is he's paying attention to how his same service is newly relevant. There he is. I just saw that like, hey, Ryan, that's a shout to you, my brother. Um, he's, he's thinking about his clients, and it's not just how to be a profiteer. And if you know Ryan, you can hear it in his voice. He's like, no, man, we could really help people with this service, man. So you got to pay attention to adjust your messaging quickly to help clients understand how your normal service is adjusting to help other people. The second one is update your client's expectations. I know with Spark Sites, we, had to, we, we normally have a three business day turnaround for requests that happen in less than two hours. That's our normal, that's our normal deal. But if, if you have longer than, than normal wait times because you're busier, you need to communicate that like yesterday, which we did. So with Spark Sites, we sent out a message. Everyone said, hey, please be patient. Our normal three-day turnaround time in, during the crisis will have to be a five-day turnaround promise. Now, internally, Brandon and Christina and, and Marissa, we're all prepped to, to still try to get that three-day turnaround time because we're still trying to honor our macro goal. 
But for you who are busier, it's okay to reach out to your clients. We all know there's a crisis. Your clients know there's a crisis. Reach out to them. Give them a buzz. Do a MailChimp email or have Spark Sites send out a message for you. Get on your Facebook and say, hey, guys, just so you know, turnaround times have extended from three-day turnaround to five-day turnaround. Please be patient as we get to everyone's requests. Aside from emergency requests, and, and at Spark, if you, have an emergency re- if you have an emergency request, we bump that to the front of the line. If you have, like, a COVID-relevant update, we'll post that. That'll bump to the front of the line. You should have something similar. Uh, in Ryan's case, if someone – call, like he might have, you know, someone's, like, RV. If he can and someone calls and says, listen, I've got an ambulance that I want to put some O2 into or I have some relevant essential vehicle that I really need help with, Ryan should have a policy or a procedure or a notification that, hey, I can do this. And his client base in general needs to know, hey, these people are how we're serving people. So update client expectations. That's point number two. Number one, adjust your messaging quickly to let people know how you're serving in this market. Number two, update your client expectations. And number three, adjust your budget market, your marketing budget mix. What I mean is this. Let's just use $100 as a balance number. You can use $1,000, whatever your marketing budget is a month. You need to adjust it. I know that a lot of things are getting cut, and you should, with a, with a, with a broad strokes, just be cutting expenses as we're looking forward to the market. But when it comes to your marketing, you need to be strategic. I mentioned this uh, in my last live or whatever about using a scalpel instead of a hammer. You need to be specific. So if your normal budget is $1,000 or $100, and let's just say you spend 60 to 75% on that on performance-based marketing, um, which is pretty reasonable in a normal market. What I mean is performance-based marketing is paid ads or ads or videos, organic or paid, I guess, whose the key metric is a conversion, a sale. That's really important. You know, you and I talk about it on the show. But the messaging in these ads is often quite salesy, which is okay in a normal market. I don't mind salesy to a degree. Hey, in a normal market, I don't mind telling you Spark Bookkeeping with Adam and Brittany Welch kills it. They're the best out there for what they do. Spark Sites is the best out there for what they do for their target clients. I absolutely go toe-to-toe with anybody on that. I don't mind saying that in a normal, in a normal market. But in this market, that is just tone deaf. So, so we got to be careful. So I encourage you to take your marketing budget, and instead of 60 to 75% paid ads, for a short period of time, and you might have already done this, so don't do this again if you've already done it, but for a predetermined period of time, pull back from conversion-driven, performance-driven ads, and think through what a messaging marketing is. And what I mean is this. With Spark, I'm very proud that we have this new kind of messaging marketing rolling out called Don't Lose Your Spark. And it's just a 15-second spot that just simply says, hey, we understand you. Don't lose your spark. We know where you're at. Don't lose your spark. Don't lose your spark. That's a messaging ad. And so our marketing budget shifts to that sort of messaging. I'm not selling anything. Yes, my logo is on the page, but it has nothing to do with selling anything. For a given period of time, adjust your marketing budget. So that you are getting some, some messaging out there. And, and we, we gave Ryan Chris, he's watching, Ryan Chris was watching, so we gave his example of, hey, let's just not sell ozone. Like, let, if, if you're going to spend $1,000 a month on your ads in this example, hypothetical with Ryan, hey, Ryan, let's do 75% for the next two weeks of just saying, hey, this is Ryan Chris with uh, TC Mobile Detailing, and we're here to support you. Know that we can make your experience better. And that's it. Don't sell anything. Then in another week or so, change the ad, your ad budget to then go back and just say, hey, listen, ozone services to clear out your bacteria or to clean your car or whatever whatever your pitch is. Make sure you're highly sensitive to fire sales. I mean, get out of here. People don't need that. They need services that will really, really, really help them and they need to be sensitive. If you're busier than normal, you're going to see that. So adjust your marketing budget. So point number three, adjust, adjust your marketing budget to focus on message-driven marketing at first. And, and my note here is to relay empathy to your client base. They need to hear that empathy first. They need to hear that in the marketing. So again, the three things to do if your brand is busier, the three marketing things to do if your brand is busier, number one, adjust your messaging to help customers understand quickly 
how you support their immediate needs. If you're busy, it's because it's in demand, but don't just sell it from your normal perspective. You don't have to change your offering. You have to change how you're messaging your offering. Number two, update your client's expectations. If your wait times are going longer, if your offering has to take a little bit different approach, if your hours have shifted, if you're busier, it's because you're in demand and you need to set those expectations accordingly because you might not be able to hire but you're more in demand. You might not be able to expand your labor, but you're more in demand. You gotta pay attention to that show. You have to communicate. Use marketing to communicate to your clients. And the third point, adjust your marketing budget to focus on less on performance-driven metrics at first and more on messaging marketing at first. And then you can adjust it. Another week or so, you can adjust this. And of course, it's a day-by-day -day thing. So that's the show. That's Marvelous Monday. I want to thank you for being here. Remember your vision today. Remember your vision for your life. Think the long term. Have a visualize having a fantastic week. Remember to plan the work and then work the plan. And in the face of challenge, you are going to have an awesome week. If you need support, please visit us at stateofthespark.com or join our Facebook group, Goals, Gratitude, and Success. That's where we're there giving our greatest content early. So get that information early. And remember the mission today. Igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own life. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We wish you the best. Take care.